I think the key to all that we do is Jay has literally laid out the blueprint, right? Um, and we are here to add to that legacy. It allows us to also create culture and not follow culture, right? I think we, we mm. pride ourselves and I think, you know, labels were at at a point responsible for creating culture, right? And I think the roles mm. are reversed where we're now having, you know, kids dictate what we think is cool and we run after whatever it is that they say is cool. You know, to me, that's the worst thing ever to, to, mm. to, to do. Our chairman is one of the best artists in the world. You know, we come from a, a, the, the tree of Rihanna's, the, the, the J. Cole's. We, we just have a different love for it. And, you know, Absolutely. the goal is to make sure not only that we, I, this is a business and we are held to standards and we do have to make money, but the goal is right. to do it in a way that we can still hold our heads high and, mm, you know, yeah. and believe in everything that we stand behind. What's going on? Welcome to the new music business. I'm your host, Ari Herstand, author of How to Make It in the New Music Business, the book. Third edition is out now everywhere. Hardcover, ebook, audio, however you like to consume books, you can find it wherever you find books. Today, my guests are Sherry Bryant and Omar Grant. They are co presidents at Rock Nation Records. Rock Nation, of course, is the label and the company uh, chaired by Jay-Z. They have worked with artists like Rihanna, J. Cole, DJ Khaled, Jaden Smith, DJ Mustard, just to name a few. Now, they are they are on all sides of the industry, but it's it's really fascinating this conversation that we had today. We talk about marketing, we talk about AR. The biggest takeaway for me is that. This is a label, Rock Nation, that is not sprinting towards the shiny object on the internet right now like so many of the majors are. They are an independent label, and they are developing artists. This is something unique in the industry in 2023. They are looking for the long tail. They are signing artists and sticking it out with them for a while. You know, they mentioned uh, later on that they will they work with artists for years and they'll develop artists. This is one of the few labels out there that I've spoken to that I know about um, that are actually developing talent. Now, of course, they they focus a lot on R&B and hip hop artists. And uh, I talked to them about, you know, what they look for in artists uh, when they're going to sign them and how artists should approach them. And a, a revealing stat that they kind of mentioned, they gave me a ballpark figure of how many artists on Rock Nation make it to the second album, uh, the a percentage. We talk about that, and you're going to definitely want to stick around for Sherry's answer on that. Um, it was very illuminating into the business practices of Rock Nation, but also the state of the industry right now in the independent realm, kind of in the uh, hip-hop, R&B realm of the music industry. It's uh, It was very fascinating. I learned a ton. I know you're going to learn a lot no matter what side of the music industry you work in and no matter what genre you focus in. You know, I don't focus uh, as much. I, I'm not an R&B artist. I'm not a hip hop artist and I don't typically work with hip hop R&B artists. I love R&B and I love hip hop. Um, and so it was really nice and illuminating to kind of learn more about this side of the industry and what they're focusing on. You can find Rock Nation everywhere, of course. Um, you can find uh, Sherry Bryant and Omar Grant on LinkedIn. You can read their profiles on Billboard. You can find them on Instagram. Uh, you can find all of us that make this show happen at Ari's Take on Instagram, TikTok, and X. You can find me at Ari Herstand on Instagram. Visit Ari'sTake.com. Get on the email list. That's where you're going to get the most up-to-date information. That is where we send out uh, new episodes, all the happenings on the new music business. And But but right now, just, just pause this, hit the subscribe button, hit the follow button, however you're listening to this. Leave us a five-star review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. If you haven't yet and you've been listening to this and you enjoy the show and you want us to keep doing it, please leave us that review, that five-star review, that rating, and uh, and follow us. All right, let's kick into the show. Sherry Bryan, Omar Grant, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. What's going on? Where where are you guys coming to me from right now? I'm in New York. I'm actually in the East Coast, so the East Coast office. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, well, I mean, thank I mean, you for, I mean, for staying late with us today. <laughs> <laughs> no, this isn't late. <laughs> okay, good. We're, I guess, yeah, New York, uh, the city that doesn't sleep. I understand. Yeah. Um, where where yeah. are you, Omar? I'm in Los Angeles. I'm in California. Oh, great. Okay. We could have done this in person. That's the weird thing post COVID (laughs) is that uh, I I do these, these kinds of interviews with people that live like two blocks from me and it's just, we don't even leave our places anymore. (laughs) So uh, cool. I don't even want to ask where you are in LA, Omar, because I, I I bet we're like blocks from each other. And I'm just like, why? I'm I'm, I'm in Burbank. Where are you? Okay, I'm in Los Feliz. So it is far okay. enough well, away well, from no, us. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. This is, this is appropriate. I'm not, especially yeah. at this time. No, no, it's not even worth it. So uh, this <laughs> right, is great. Right. I, love, <laughs> anyway, I love Los Feliz, by the uh, way. Yeah, oh, I, it's my yeah, favorite it's neighborhood. Yeah. It's so walkable. It, you know, it's like I do love New York. And one of my favorite things to do when I'm there is to just walk everywhere and just take in the energy. Um, mm-hmm. But I really lucked out with this neighborhood because I don't really need a car very much. I can walk everywhere. Right. Everything's right in here. And so I feel like this is a this is kind of my home for now. So it's great. Right. It's beautiful. One, one of the few areas in, in L.A. that you can do that. Yeah. Truth. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Cool. Well, thank you guys um, for. Uh, I, I know we're not here to talk about LA geography, even though we, we definitely could. Um, we don't want Sherry to feel left out. Um, so, um, I, so we're here. Let's let's talk Rock Nation. Um, and before we kind of get into the weeds and the nuances of everything, um, if you could just kind of tell us what your roles are um, at Rock Nation, and let's uh, just kind of so we all understand kind of just you know, with your roles, but also a little bit of your day to day. Sherry, why don't Absolutely. you get started? Yes. Please. Yeah. So um, I always like to make the distinction. So me and Omar, we oversee the label vertical of Rock Nation. So Rock Nation okay. has a pretty big ecosystem. You know, we mm-hmm. have our sports division, we have publishing, we have sports. I mean, I said that sports publishing, film, um, and we oversee the the label division. So we are co-presidents. Um, I come from a marketing and operations background. So um, we 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 have we have like our respective roles. We always say me and Omar. We always say I you know because I come from the marketing world. I'll oversee all things marketing and our team. And Omar, Omar will speak for himself. But A and R. But we our roles really blend because mm. if there's, um, if he has an idea, there's, you know, we, we take that into account. If I have an artist I love, I take it into account. We just work really well together, but, um, ultimately, uh, we oversee the label. So all things label from signing to developing, um, cool. musical acts. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that, Every- uh, that we are talking about the music side, the label side today and not the sports division, because uh, then we'd be on the wrong show. Um, but, <laughs> and, and I would be I would be sorely at a loss. Um, you know, I, I do love uh, my Dodgers and uh, I love baseball. But other than that, I, I would be um, out of my element. So <laughs> I, I'm glad we're, we're right. talking about um, <laughs> Omar. How about you? Um, yeah, I mean, I think she pretty much said it all. But you know, obviously, cool. our, our our titles say uh, co-president, but we right. we kind of pride ourselves in in also getting our hands dirty and and uh, getting in the weeds and in, in every aspect from the smallest thing to the biggest thing too as well. Cool. Yeah. Um, well, that's great, and I love Sherry that you mentioned that you have a background in marketing and uh, you kind of oversee that side. And Omar and our ish or just kind of if you even want to break it down in that realm because yeah. that kind of starts the you know the the journey of the artist start to finish that's right yeah I'm, yeah i mean you know we we as sherry said you know she she comes from a marketing background i come from an a and r background from like you know mm-hmm. I've, I've done rihanna albums from dj mustard to big sean to you know everything from shakira to kylie minogue to you know everything i pride myself on um you know being a being a, a full a music person out there a record a, a real record guy um so yes i yeah. mean that's kind of my my expertise coming into it um uh, but again you know we i think we 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 all share in, in everything we do. Like, you know, Sherry comes and brings us artists and, you know, has ideas on the, on the A&R side. You know, I, I come with other things and opportunities and things that I, that I present on the marketing side that I think will be cool. You know, so I think we all kind of yeah. all jump in and 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 and, uh, and make this ship. We, I mean, I think it's needed for all of us to kind of to keep this ship running and make this ship running in its full capacity. Great. Yeah. So let's... Um... 
I mean, this is the uh, the new music business podcast. I, I can you help us understand kind of the business behind Rock Nation and and um, is this an independent label? Is it a subsidiary of a major? Talk to us about the distribution mechanisms. Do you use major for who do you use for distribution? Like, get us in the weeds here. Definitely. Yeah. So we are fully independent in a sense of um, we we distribute through a major, but all of our services um, come strictly from this building, from Rock okay. Nation, the company. Um, so everything from A and R to marketing to mm-hmm. um, sales and commerce, um, every every one of those things, all of the the pieces that you need to kind of like start and develop an artist um, happen mm-hmm. internally. Uh, but UMG is our partner and we distribute mm-hmm. through UMG, um, Universal Music Group. And we yep. also um, partner with them on all foreign licensing. So anything ex-US, we utilize UMG's uh, label services for mm-hmm. ex-US. Um, and we have, we do have an internal person. His name is David Miller, who oversees it on our end. Um, but we do partner with, um, so let's say, you know, if we're going to London, for instance, we, we would utilize either Polydor or EMI or Def Jam UK. Um, but we do partner with, uh, their ex US labels. Gotcha. And can you explain what label services mean? Yes. So meaning like what we provide to an artist that we have in house. Uh, well, you, well, let's first specifically talk about when you said XUS, you use UMG for label services. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's start there and what, what uh, services you use from UMG when you're talking XUS, whether it's Polydor, EMI, Def Jam. Uh, and then we can kind of get into it internally, you know, Rock Nation US and just what you do. But let's, let's start there just so we all kind of understand what, what you mean by label services. Yeah. So um, when you and Omar, please feel free to jump in. Uh, but when we when we uh, when we kind of like map out to another label to an XUS mm-hmm. label. So for instance, let's take Polydor. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of the A and R work is usually done within us, right? And we kind of like within us, meaning like the Rock Nation team, and we also mm-hmm. build and set the foundation. But with doing that, you then need it to travel, right? You need it to, we don't want to stay um, domestic. The, the idea is that we're building brands here and the brand, you know, you need that to be global. And so what we do is once we feel like the time is right and it's case mm-hmm. by case, it's artist by artist, but when the time is right to start engaging and we're looking at metrics, um, mm-hmm. we're looking at the type of artists and you know, whether the genre they're in travels faster than another genre in, those, in that respective territory. And we're, we're timing that out. And then once we time it out, we'll, we'll we go to the label and we just, you know, we give them all that we've done so far. And they then, the XUS label then comes in and says, okay, well, based off of where you are with said artists, this is what we need to do next. So they may say, mm-hmm. you know, this artist should be in all of the, the the fashion shows, you know, because we see that there's an angle there and we want to tap in. They may say, you know what, this artist, um, their sound sounds aligned with an artist that we have out here. So maybe we should partner with, you know, partner those artists together so that we can start building traction organically um, in mm-hmm. the marketplace. Um, so they're coming up with ideas just the same way we build an artist here, but they're coming up with what, it would take to build the artists in their respective territory because territories are different, you know, taste mm. um, levels are different. And so we're, we're just kind of like figuring out how to integrate the two. Um, but in a way that we still remain true to who we ultimately are, if that makes sense. We're not trying to change the artist based off the territory. We're just trying to see how we naturally integrate into that territory. Yeah. And I think and I think that's an important thing you said, too, as well. I think when we sign and bring these artists on, I think we look at them as global artists as well. You know, I don't think we just kind of hyper focus on their territory or their their, you know, their region. Uh, you know, we have artists like Maida, for instance, who we just um, had on the UK and sold out um, her sold out 500 seaters as a new, brand new artist, uh, 500 seater in, in London and Paris and Amsterdam. Um, and, you know, Sherry. Uh, 
uh, on her side bringing or well, uh, us as a whole, but her, her leading the charge on our, our R and B nights where um, we brought them over to the to the UK to showcase them to our US, our UK or, uh, or global partners. Um, so yeah, I think in going into it and signing artists that we wanted that we're developing, I think we look at it as we we want career artists and career artists do, do travel. That's right. Yeah, no, that's helpful. Um, you know, in in such a, a digital world that we're in right now, I sometimes think that we lose track of um, that that there are local experts uh, everywhere you go, and even though we have the internet and we have uh, the ability to email anybody or whatever, um, you know, DM anyone, it's still helpful to have boots on the ground wherever you're going because they intimately know the market. And so, uh, Sherry, I liked your example of sh fashion shows, like local fashion shows. I mean, that's something that I would not even expect to think about, let alone a label uh, doing. So let's, let's talk a little bit about the marketing side like that because Already mentioning fashion shows is not something that I would normally expect in a marketing campaign of an artist at a label. So when you're thinking like that, whether it's domestic, international, anything like that, you know, other than uh, we're going to pitch playlists or we're going to run ads, <laughs> social media ads, like, you know, tell me some, tell me the approach for, for marketing. Um, you know, you mentioned Meta. Why don't we, why don't we start there? Um, I think her rollout, um, was, was, is excellent. And, and it's, um, you know, it's very cohesive and I'm curious kind of the approach approach with, with this campaign. Yeah, I would say, I mean, before we even get specifically into Meta, I think what we sure. do here is, um, I like to draw out a chart, right? I always say, okay. so whether it's me, I like to actually draw it out, but if it's not me drawing it out, it's in my head, right? And what, okay. I, what we do as a team is we put the artists in one box and then there's these subsidiary boxes, right? And it's like, what are the other things that make up the artist? Because right now we know we're competing with a oversaturated marketplace, right? It's nothing we can do about that. There's over 500,000 songs is it a week or a day at this point? I'm losing track oh, yeah. because, <laughs> because- Too many. That's what it's it is. Too it's many. too many. <laughs> right. That's the point. And so it's yeah. always, how do you break through the noise? You know, we're going to, it's always going to be great music and great artists first, but we also know the marketplace that we're competing with. And we know that there's a, we live in a day and age where- character sells more than music and you sometimes you have to build the brand to bring them back to the music and so we think about all of the things that make up an artist and it's not only the music because we know we're going to have that right sure but what are the, all the other things that make up the artist so that we can bring in fan bring in fan bases in in different ways and so Meta, for instance you know we we were you know we know she's beautiful it's undeniable beauty omar created a masterful project um, and not being biased. It's really a great <laughs> project. And what we we took, you know, the element, and we actually sat with Meta. Meta had a lot to do with this as well. It's like, where do you see your brand going? And she wanted mm -hmm. to be in fashion. She wanted to be in beauty. And so we brought in uh, um, someone that had a specialty in the fashion world and we made sure, you know, like just started dressing her and, you know, the clothes, taking her to fashion houses, so that she could meet people, you know, because that's also not a turnkey thing. It's not just, you have to build real relationships in that respect. Um, and so that's, we're still in, we're still in the beginning stages of it, but we're making a lot of progress there where we're, um, mm -hmm. you know, she's getting invited to the show, she's sitting front row um, and it's a long way to go, but next steps are them playing her music, the DJ's playing her music because she's there, right? And then, you know, eventually we'll start getting um, requests for performances. So um, it's just, you know, we're always looking at ways that we can market to another audience, but it mm -hmm. still kind of like comes back to the music, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Omar, do you want to... Uh -huh. Add on no, to no, that. I mean, no, no, I mean, no, I think I think she said it beautifully, like, you know, and I think it's also, uh, you know, knowing who the artist is as well. You know, I think like, you know, Sherry's always says, you know, not making cookie cutter plans for each one. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we sit down and we have these when we sign someone or we bring them on, we we, we 
kind of dive in. And sometimes it takes time, right? It takes time. Like Maida, for instance, you know, we signed her at 17 years old. You know, she's 22 now, maybe. And so it's, it's not, it wasn't an a overnight thing that we, we've done. It's been five years of work of getting the music right, understanding who she is as an artist, who's, who's, what's true to her musically and, mm. and aesthetically and, and who's her audience and defining all of those things. So, um, you know, it, it takes, it takes a minute and, and Sherry always has, uh, you know, I, I, I quote her a lot cause she, you know, she, she has a lot of quotables, but you know, we, we had the mentality of taking the, 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 the stairs and not the elevator, right? Because it, it, mm. it, it, uh, it, 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 um, it just, it just, it just, it's more meaningful at that point, right? It, 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 it it's a, it's a last long thing. Any artist that we sign, we have a, a an idea of like, you know, we're not going to sign. It's going to blow up tomorrow, right? We, we have an yeah. idea. We're in this long term. We're in this for five years at, at the minimum to see it through, you know, and because mm. of the fact that we see every artist that we see, we see as career artists, you know, we, mm. we are invested long term into them. And, and being long, and best in long term means doing all these things, means putting money where we normally may not put money um, or in meaning what you said before, just in a, a digital plan or just in, a, a, a you know, whatever it is that every other, you know, typical thing has done. You know, there's there's yeah. other avenues in, in, in building because we're we're invested, we're partners, we're true partners with the with, the, with our artists. Sorry. I, I appreciate you. You talking mentioning that you focus on the long term i i feel like especially in the major uh label realm um eh, over the last five years or so i mean everything has gotten everything feels like a sprint and as the Mm -hmm. majors kind of just just uh sprinted towards every tiktok viral moment every tiktok viral song um it it felt like um, they weren't focusing on the artists uh, or artistry, and it was more about just like the the money grab, the quick the quick hit. What is going to be, mm-hmm. what is going to you know turn around the quick fastest for them, and and um, they kind of seemed to just try to buy up as many of the uh, the viral moments as possible. Um, I'm curious when it comes because Rock Nation is technically in indie. Um, even though you you have major label affiliation um, with distribution and international, um, do you find that you have that flexibility? And if so, how do you have this flexibility? Um, and and are there pressures um, internal external to uh, jump at those those shiny new things that are blowing up and going viral right right now? And and where does the discipline come from? to say we're going to stick with an artist for years, even though if they're not returning right now. I, I I feel like that has become increasingly more rare in the industry across the board. Uh, but but speak to that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think it comes with just learning. And I think, you know, Rock Nation before Shari and I got there, and even when we got there, you know, went through his growing pains of figuring out the identity of what, you know, we were as a label. And I think, um, you know, though, I think, some presidents before us and, you know, not saying anything bad or anything in that, in that way, but I think, sure. you know, just figuring out the, as a label went through those pains of, of signing a lot of things. Right. And when Sherry, came, Sherry and I came in, we had to play a lot of catch up of, you know, what, um, you know, what makes sense for us to keep on our label, what to drop, what to, to, to keep on, what to pursue, what new things to sign on and just, you know, building out the label as a whole. Um, but I, but I think we found that that business model doesn't work for us because of we're in an independent label, you know. And I think staff wise, mm. I think uh, you know, budget wise, I think all those those things come into play when we uh, when we uh, when you do that, right? And I think it just doesn't work for us to do it. I think it makes more sense for us to invest in a few artists or that we really that we truly believe in, than to go and run and sign every little thing that's that's has its small moment because it's it's mm-hmm. it's like a shiny new toy. You know, it's it's there and it, 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 it's cool. But then you know a lot of those artists we see, you know, two three years down the line, where are they? You know, and I think also culturally, I think you know. I, our chairman is one of the best artists in the world. You know, we come from a, a, the the tree of Rihanna's, the 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 Jay Cole's, the the you know, the, the list goes on and on. Jay Z being you know, the chairman. I, Jay's, because... yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes, yeah. I think okay. we I have to, just I... just clarifying for the listeners here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So to, right. To, yes. to to me, to me, I think we have to 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 uphold that legacy. You know, and I think we have mm-hmm. to create our next generations of Rihanna's and Cole's and Jay Z's and Kanye's and so on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I couldn't have said it better. I think the key to all that we do is Jay has literally laid out the blueprint, right? Um, and <laughs> we are here to add to that legacy. And 
I think that's where the discipline comes in as well. And being able to just stay head down and, and focused on building the artist is because we've seen even Jay's career and what that took, right? And the, and the, and the, the runway to really becoming who he is today. And he preaches that all the time. And so mm. when you don't, when you have a founder that isn't scared of that runway, it makes it easier for us to yeah. do the job because he thoroughly understands understands that you know mm. that makes a lot of sense and i mean yeah i wish more labels uh were were kind of run by artists or at least founded by artists and and had that artist philosophy because uh mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. um it's frustrating you know with I, I have a lot of friends and peers who you know uh they get swept up in this system where it, their artistry seems like an afterthought and it seems like just a lot of the industry is chasing virality right now. Um, and, you know, when Jay-Z Jay came out, I mean, we we're talking a completely different industry. And it, it feels like it that, that was the old industry. I mean, this was like pre-internet almost. You know, it's just like it doesn't. It, it doesn't even compare, but the fact that the ethos have has maintained, I think, is is um, really encouraging um, and, and encouraging to hear that there are still labels out there that are focused on the artistry. Um, yeah, I you mean, know, uh, one thing, and one thing. Sorry, yeah, not to get ahead. up to, to, but but I think one no, thing with that, it, it allows us to also create culture and not follow culture, right? I think we we mm. pride ourselves, and I think you know, labels were at at a point, you know responsible for the were most labels responsible for creating culture right and and telling not necessarily telling the people but us actually being one of the people who go out there and and, and find the next stars and you know they look to us to be the 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 ones who who gave them the next stars right where i think the roles mm -hmm. are reversed where we're now having you know kids dictate what or what what we think is cool and we run after whatever it is that they say is cool you know it's like okay it's cool yeah let's run after this sign a million of these artists that that and not necessarily like we not we might not even like it we're just saying okay well the kids like right. it so let's like like you know to me that's the worst thing ever to to, to, mm -hmm. to do um you know that you know that that being said i think it's 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 yeah. really important for us to 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 be mindful of that and and, and be able to continue to like you know go there and, and not necessarily just follow the trends and, and just because it's cool and water down what the culture is, you know? Yeah. I think when we have when we go to these points where we see that, uh, you know, and we go to these stats where R&B is down or rap is down or whatever, these, you know, all these things are down, you know, rap is down, sales 49%, 59%, whatever, I think it's, it's because we're, we're just watering down the culture. We're watering down. Instead mm. of jumping off the ship, I think Shari and I doubled down. I mean, we signed more rappers this year than I think we've ever signed, but I think we want to be ahead of what the culture is, of what of what rap is, where we where we dictate, well, not even necessarily dictate, but where we see it going, you know, and where sure. the artists that we truly still believe in in our heart, and we want to, again, you know, spend three, four, five years developing them or, or seeing it through, and I, and I, you know, I just love that model of it, of, of being a, a head of culture and pushing culture forward instead of just chasing behind it. Yeah. So what do you look for when you are going to sign a new artist? I think it's just gut feeling at the end of the day. You know, I still I think that 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 chill factor still, you know, that that, you know, that that goosebump chill factor still still, you know, still does something. You know, when we talk about Mado, we talk about Ombre, we talk about artists that, that we signed when they were, you know, still four or five years ago and now starting to raise their hands. You know, these were artists that didn't have any any social media following. They didn't have any, you know, anything. I think Mada didn't have any songs up. I think Ombre was a songwriter for, you know, writing for Kehlani and, and Chloe and Halle and, and artists like that. But um, it was really like the songs gave me chills. Her voice gave me chills. Like it was something that I felt like we wanted to invest and dive into, you know, and, and I can name that, I can name go down the line with all the, the artists that we have. I mm -hmm. think it's still that factor. And, and we're aware of the, 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 the numbers. We're not, you know, we don't, we're not, you know, blind to it. We, we look at statistics sure. and all those things, but I don't think that's a determining factor of, of signing an artist. Yeah. I feel like when we started, um, we kind of had to carve out where we wanted to play in the arena of, you know, the music industry. Mm -hmm. And one of the metrics where no matter what we do, it has to be authentic. Yes. Now, we, we will go to any genre um, as long as the artist, we're not manufacturing an artist. We always say we can amplify your vision. We don't want to give you your vision. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. a big thing for us um, stepping into these offices, like when we're meeting them. 
So with all of those, I it is one thousand percent, you know, like the gut feeling. But I think with that gut feeling also comes some level of authenticity. You can't be faking mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. you know. Absolutely. So I'm curious. Um, let's talk made a little bit. Uh, Seventeen. You signed her mm-hmm. at seventeen or something. I mean. I, First off, how does she get on your radar? Um, how does that even happen, especially in this this day and age? And and does anybody have a sense of who they are at seventeen? And what did you see? And and let's start. Let's start with the first. Start with the how, and then the what. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, it was it was a leap of faith, really. You know, her manager at okay. the time had sent me a, a Instagram clip of her singing her best part, literally, like just a clip of her singing, singing. You know, and and the 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 the, uh, the clip gave me goosebumps. I was like, damn, this girl can can really sing. And you know, this yeah. wasn't the the young beautiful woman we see in in front of us now. You know, it's like a, this young seventeen year old girl with you know oversized hoodies and you know all kind you know whatever it is that that wasn't the sure. the, the glam glamorous Maida that we see today. Um, mm-hmm. And I went, I met with her, I met with her family, the men and manager and sat down and had like a, had dinner with her for like an hour and a half and, and decided we wanted to do it. And what I wanted to go in and, and make a record on her, you know, and it's also seeing, that, it's also seeing something that, that, that's also, sorry, it's, it's also seeing something that um, please. is, is uh, not necessarily out there, right? Like, especially in the R and B space, I think there's you know many artists that kind of sit in the same pocket, right? And there's mm-hmm. there's there's no uh, there's no uh, I don't want to say difference, but there's no like their own identity, right? And and when I see an artist, I, I kind of look at them as like, how would they sit with what's going on now, and, and how do we create carve out their own lane for them, right? Like Ombre, for instance, I see her as like a young Tracy Chapman, right? Like whereas a young you know talented musician sing a songwriter and the songs i think she would of uh, tracy was singing then it's like what is the who's the modern day tracy chapman to me you know and I, I don't want to sound a uh, kind of blasphemous but like like i, I don't see uh, uh any young mariah's right and i think to me made as a an idea to me it's like our our young mariah right and and i and i and i'm and the music that we make on her the the way we present it to me it's it's carving out or, or just setting her own lane a home path of of who uh of who she is as an artist, and that's that's the that's the idea we saw when we first signed her, and that's what we're we're, we're working towards. It's interesting to me because yeah, Maida got got her start by uh, posting co- herself singing covers on Instagram mm-hmm. and SoundCloud. Um, right, and so I I don't know I'm I if you know I'd love to know how she met her manager. I'm assuming they saw you know maybe some of those covers or something like that. I but, believe so. You know, getting getting back to the the vision. You know, I like how you said we we amplify vision. Um, uh, we don't give them a vision. Um, you know. Here's an artist who, okay, she's got a good voice, great voice. Let's go, great voice. Um, mm-hmm. But it, no originals. It's not like she's a. It's not like you're you're falling in love with her songs. You know, like you mentioned Tracy Chapman. Those are songs. You hear her song. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who's singing it. That's like, it could be a country star, just like we got now. Right. You know, right. it it doesn't matter. Her songs are clearly the core of her identity and who she is, and she has something to say in the songs. So. I, kind of getting back to that, it's like, you know, taking such a leap on just somebody with a great voice. Like, I, I'd still, I'd love to just know more, like, what what did it for you? Like, I hear people with good I voices mean, all the time, and I get chills too, but are, but like, are you willing to invest five years and tons and tons of money and time and resources into somebody with a great voice? Like, what else did it? I think, I think it's also the, the, the phrase that, uh, A&R is not dead too. <laughs> you know, I think, you know, okay. as, as, as we go into this kind of digital age or algorithm age, or, you know, when we're, we're just looking at things online and signing things because it has a viral moment, I think there, mm-hmm. you know, there's, that's a testament of us actually finding someone, finding great songs for her together with her as well. Cause she's involved mm-hmm. in, the, in the process very much so as well. But it's like, you know, if I find a voice, I find someone who has a, a unique and rare talent to me, you know, the songs are come, we can find the songs. Like I believe in, my, my, me and my team's a and you know, the quality abilities to, to find songs and actually really create a, a body of work. And we see it like, you know, not to, and, and, you know, thank you, Sherry, for mentioning it early, but, you know, I don't want to, you know, beat my chest, but at the end of the day, I feel like we made a great project on made. I think we make great music with Ombre. I think Dixon, who's coming up next, is making great music. I think, you know, even mm-hmm. on our rap side, the Kalen and the, and the Humble Souls project, I think we really as a team, as an a and team, really went in and really dialed in and, and created really good quality music. And I think that's what's going to cut through in these next couple of years for us. Yeah. And I mm. also think that 
you know, even though artists like for Maida, for instance, you know, you, you seen covers on her, it was still something about Maida when you sat down, the perspective that she has, right? Like what she goes through her, she, she had a voice that there was things to extract from to kind of like mm-hmm. say what her first direction was, right? Like um, mm-hmm. baby girl was about her sitting in a room and just vibing out and smoking what, right. you know, what, you know, girls her age do, did at the time. So, which was like, I, I referenced that record because it was one of our first big records that people started really paying attention to her. But there was still this, you know, as you're finding the record, you still have to match the identity. And I think that mm-hmm. there there was still something that we are able to pull from artists that you just can't, can't I mean, we can, if we, if we needed to create a plant, we could, right? We can just, you know, take mm-hmm. something and put it there. <laughs> but I think that we're still shaping what we do around the artists that we sign. Um, and they play a role in that. Like you can't, you can still gotta be able to sell it, right? And there's mm-hmm. something about those mm-hmm. artists when we meet them, their perspective, the conversation that allows us to say, okay, we can actually turn this into a star, a brand, Um, you know, there's definitely, so when I say that we're amplifying a vision, we're still kind of like 10 X in what that person is already, if that Mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah, no, perfect sense. Um, So, I mean, this is, it's very encouraging and and I I don't know um, how much you, I'm sure you, you, speak with a lot of your colleagues and counterparts at, at other labels, um, and especially the majors. It's just like, I, I feel like I, I feel like we're having a conversation 20 years ago. I feel like I, this is like a bygone <laughs> era. Like, Omar, you say it, that a and isn't dead. I thought it was yeah. dead uh, yeah, until I mean, this conversation I, right I, now. I'm, we're trying to keep it alive. We're trying to keep it alive. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it. I mean, this is just, I, you're, yeah, this is, this is something that I just don't hear very often. Um, mm-hmm. And I haven't heard very frequently. You hear, you know, the the the, the study like the artists here and there that kind of pop off that were developed, like like a her, you know, like you referenced earlier. You know, it's like a similar artist who was, you know, signed very young, developed mm-hmm. behind the scenes. It just we don't see that happening as often these days because the labels are their attention spans are, majors, I should say, are so small and so short rather. And it's um, there's so many outside pressures to have that hit today, not in five years, and that we need to make the books work out today and not in five years. So, yeah. I mean, I, I'm curious, you know, your approach, and, and I know you're saying, that, you know, you customize the rollout and the approach uh, for every artist, and it's, and it's probably different for every artist. But if you want to speak to Meta or another artist, when you bring in somebody who is so, let's say, fresh, where... They have a great voice, but we don't have songs yet. Maybe we we have the vision, but it's not quite honed yet. And the identity isn't quite what it is. Like you said, she went from, you know, baggy sweatpants, just kind of a 17-year-old girl hanging out um, to a kind of this turning into a, a fashion icon. You know, it's like, what is what is that journey and the rollout and like the process and how do you how do you go about that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I can Go start, sure. right? Yeah. I think yeah, um, to your uh, to your earlier point, you know, artists evolve, right? So I think even for us, we we're evolving with the artists. So we may start mm-hmm. off one way. To Omar's point of, you know, when Meta, when we first started rolling out Meta, it was very, it was more fun, right? It was it was the it was the her perspective where she was at that given moment. So we played into that. We didn't try to turn her into something that was super sexy until she was naturally ready to do that. Because we're mm-hmm. like, you have to go out there every day and sell it, right? So we don't want to give you something that you can't sell. So the music um, really was aligned with who she was until she started wanting to talk about different things. She was experiencing different things in her life, and it and you can you grew with her. And I think that was what was special before, right? As artists, you know, when you were a lot of the artists that we still listen to today, we grew with them. They kind of like raised us through music and, you know, in some respect. And, um, sure. and so, you know, our plans are always, it, it starts really kind of like where I, where, from what I mentioned before, where we're figuring out where the artist is at this given moment, understanding 
wh who that music appeals to. We're big on building community and engagement first. So, you know, we're not trying to go after the big mainstream um, looks in the beginning. We're really focused mm -hmm. on building core audience, um, like who's your sub fan group um, and speaking to them every day. And for someone mm -hmm. like Maida, that really paid off because now we're seeing her go into these rooms and be able to, you know, we, we're not in the big rooms yet, but we're able to sell out 500 seater, you know, venues because she was so intentional with growing with her fans and speaking with her fans, heavy focus on a digital component before we even started thinking about what a PR component would look like, right? Because we feel like if you, if you focus on building a strong fan group, they will be your biggest advocates that then are so loud that they help you get other things, you know, because I think a lot of, in, a, in the marketplace that we're in today, a lot of people, you have to create the demand in order for anybody to even buy in. And so what's, you know, what's the best way to create the demand? Stay in focus, building your lane and staying in one direction also. You know, mm -hmm. not confusing the fan base, but letting them know what they're coming to you for. Um, and so that's really big for us is like identifying the audience and who we're speaking mm -hmm. to. Um, I usually tell the artists, um, what is your fan? What's the name of the fan that you're speaking to? What is it? What do mm -hmm. they look like? What do they dress like? Because mm -hmm. there's, there's a million people of that one person that you have in your mind. So if we continue to speak to them, until we get so big that we can then grow into other things and we can start thinking about what another person looks like. Um, right. But it's really important to stay, stay, um, stay, just stay focused in one direction in the beginning. And that one direction yeah. could take really long. That could take three years of you just, and it feels redundant, but that one person is growing and growing. It's the same person, but they're growing yeah. into um, a bigger fan group. I love that. And that, I mean, it, I think that, and there's so many gems there and, it, and it's so important, I think, for any artist in any genre to think about that one fan, who's the one fan, because that's a lot more manageable when you can really just think about the one fan, the one person that you are talking to, interacting with versus it's for everybody because that's not helpful because if you're like, well, this is for everyone, then it's really for no one because you have no idea who you are, or who you're speaking to. So um, that's that I love that. that That's so helpful. Um, Omar, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? No, I think I think I think Sherry's you know been knocking those questions out and hitting her on the head. You know, I, but I think one thing you said before was um, in 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 uh, you know labels developing. I think there are. I think that you know yeah. the. In some some sense, I think the the more the the indie the the boutique labels like you know I, I'll give a shout out to like LVRN I love what they're doing too as well you know I think those are so, mm -hmm. those are some um, uh, of the labels that are actually going out and still developing things too as well so you know it's alongside us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Omar's so nice because I don't care about what nobody else is doing. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this is no. we're the ones doing it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Um, what are some of the indicators uh, that you look for as you grow with an artist? And and you know, I'm assuming I don't know, and and most people don't know the artists that don't make it because we don't hear about them. So mm -hmm. I'm curious if there are artists that you've signed and then after some amount of time, whether it's six months, whether it's three years, it's just not working. And then when do you kind of pull the plug and say, all right, this isn't really working. And, and, and then on the flip side, what are the indicators where you're like, you know what? No, 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 this, we're going to keep sticking it out with them. Yeah. yeah, we've 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 had those instances. Um, I wish we could say that we, you know, our batting average is, <laughs> um, you know, a hundred percent. But we uh, we started with um, a larger roster than we, you know, than we ended with. Um, let's say ended mm -hmm. this year with, right? Um, and a lot of those cases have been the same in a sense of not that we feel like we made a mistake in terms of the artists, you know, just kind of like what we've seen in the artists, but when the hustle doesn't match the, our hustle, because again, when, like Omar said in the beginning, we are in it every day. 
we're not, yep. you know, I, I, you know, I'll be on a video shoot. Omar will be in the studio all night. Like we don't, we, we're not high level presidents. So um, hmm. when you're in it every day, you want to see that the artist is given as much as your team is given. And when, and I don't only, huh. I, I don't only speak for me and Omar, our team, you know, we are a reflection of our team. So, and our team is a reflection of us. So we require, you know, all hands on deck and, a lot of times where, in most cases, I would say, where the artist, where we're no longer in business with the artist, that's usually what happened is that the artist wasn't giving 100%. They weren't giving the same level of um, hustle that we were. It was never like mm. a creative thing where we were having differences. Um, not to say that that won't happen where, mm. you know, that can definitely happen. But nine times out of 10, it was, they just wasn't delivering. Yeah. And we're like, we have a lot more artists that are working a lot harder than you. So our attention is yeah. gonna go over there. Yeah, because the creative differences, I think we can always talk through. You know, it may take some take longer sure. than others, but we, you know, we, you know, we, we have real honest and open conversations with, with managers, with artists direct and with, with our, our team. And so I think those, like to your point, yeah, like I think it's just, though that's the main reason, like creatively we can always overcome and we can get through and, and fight through and work through. Mm. Definitely. That's great. So um, I'm curious if you have any ballpark of these numbers um, in terms of the number of artists, let's just say last year, um, or I don't know, the number of artists that you sign um, versus the ones that stay with you, you know, is there like, do you think that there's like, oh, you know, 10% of the artists that we sign are going to stay with us? Um, you know, through two albums or something like that? Or is it 80%? Like, I, I have no concept and I, I of, of Rock Nation. I don't know if, if these are even, if you even have the ballpark. I'm, I'm just curious, like, hmm. what is the relationship and the kind of how does that all work out and, and where, you know, yeah, do you have do you have a ballpark? I mean, I mean maybe we should start keeping, I don't know if we, we have that, that but, but, but I mean, I think it's pretty. It's a pretty. It's a pretty high high number that we that we keep and and continue really? the relationship with. You know, I'm sure you can weigh anybody. Maybe know more than I do, but I don't. I don't know if we had that exact number. Yeah. Sure. I mean, if I. So when you say stay with us, you mean stay with us through your the let's their say, contract. Let's say two or... albums. Mm -hmm. Let Let's say two uh -oh. albums. Yeah, we we're high. We're yeah. we're. I yeah. I want to say Over at least 50%? like percent. Over fifty. Over yeah. 50%, wait. Oh, yes, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. What were you gonna yeah. say? At least what? Eighty percent. Like we're, yeah. we're wow. really high. Yeah. That that's the opposite <laughs> of majors. You know, majors. It's like under five percent. Um, and that that will you know an, a new artist that signs that will stick with for for two albums because they sign so many. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But 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 the thing with that too is going back to what we said. Like you know, I think most of them sign it because of a moment, whether it's a viral moment, right. whether it was a song that went you know that that kind of went crazy for one. These they signed these these big you know tremendous deals and not not really believing in the artist behind that record or that viral moment. You know, it's cool to have a viral moment. Yeah. We we you know we we that that you know kickstart the whole campaign but at the end of the day like i, I want to be able to feel as passionate i do about that artist day one i mean day you mm -hmm. know 10 years whatever down the line however long the relationship goes as i did you know day one yeah yeah and, and because we're that. small yeah. we're small we have the luxury of operating from a business mm. perspective that way right yeah. i like exactly. to call us i like to call us the small giant um we we <laughs> We operate small, we can, you know, manage our overhead um, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a more efficient way, uh, but it also allows us to do what we love. And that's what I love about, you know, I've been at majors, um, decided mm -hmm. to, that I love, you know, smaller companies because it allows you to like really hone in and focus on the things that you believe in and mm. protect the culture that we believe in that we were raised in you know i started mm -hmm. in this business at 16 and omar really young as well and mm -hmm. you know i think we, we we just have a different love for it and you know Absolutely. the goal is to make sure not only that we I, this is a business and we are held to standards and we do have to make money but the goal is right. to do it in a way that we can still hold our heads high and mm -hmm. you know yeah. 
and believe in everything that we stand behind. Love that. Um, there's a lot of artists and managers listening right now. Um, what would you say to them if they are looking for a label like Rock Nation right now as to what their approach should be to how to even get in the room with you, get their DM or email opened, or just what is the approach um, at, for labels uh, like Rock Nation? I mean, I mean, for me, I'm pretty, I'm pretty easy. I mean, you know, whether it's a DM, whether it's, you know, I, I'm probably, I'm pretty, I'm just sweet Sharon now. We probably know the, if not the whole business, you know, I, I think I'm pretty, yeah. pretty easy to get with and, and, uh, and, uh, and to take a meeting with or a conversation, a call or, you know, those things. It's just pretty, it's pretty straightforward to me. But in what sense? In, in, in trying to find an artist, trying to find a. Well, let me, let me, let me rephrase it. So every artist listening right now thinks that they have the it factor and that they're going to give you chills just like Mayday gave you chills. Right. And that's just, we know that. <laughs> every artist thinks that they mm -hmm. are the next fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't have enough time to filter the millions of artists out there that are going to be, you know, fly. so, you know, I guess if uh, artists that are listening or managers that are listening, what would you advise them to do in terms of when they're ready to approach someone like you and how? Um, that's yeah, that, that's a great question. I mean, I think you like you said, everyone believes they're further along than it is. Right. I think it's, it's that sense of reality of, of getting a great team together at first. Right. Where, where not just coming to us cold, you know, because a team is going to a great team is going to want to be honest with you, you know, help you develop your sound. So you're ready to get to the point where you are sitting in front of a room with but before Sherry or not. Right. Um, and I think mm -hmm. getting that team and having someone reputable helps, you know, when you have a reputable manager or someone who um, is at least known in the business or someone who has a, mm -hmm. a, a, whether it's an attorney, whether it's a lawyer, whether it's someone in the business that we can, we could trust, you know, of course it gets to our desk a, a little quicker. Um, you know, I, I think I pride myself on trying to listen to everything and return every email and every, to every artist, whether it's, you know, I listen to it, whether it's not good, I give my, you know, you know, feedback, good or bad, you know, just to kind of give them some kind of, you know, criticism. Um, I, I send it over to some of my A&Rs too as well, if I don't have time to, and maybe they'll they'll feed through it and say, ah, oh, this wasn't really good. And I'll, you know, I'll, I'll like, well, respond to them and copy me or something like that, you know? Um, yeah. But for that, but I think the biggest thing is, is getting a team together because a good team is going to be honest mm. with you. And, and, and half of that too as well, you know, you know, Shari, I'm sure she can attest to this too as well. I think it's it's so much easier to work with an artist when they have a great team behind them as well you know because we're gonna we're like she said earlier we're gonna put all of our energy and all of our muscle and all of our you know energy into into breaking this artist or into to 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 creating something that we feel is special um so it it, it, it makes our job easier when we the other side is, is putting that other 100 percent into as well mm. yeah you and, mentioned and i would just oh, oh go, go ahead, ahead. Please. No, no, I was going to answer the question, but I don't want to lose track. Do you want to ask them? <laughs> no, no, please answer the question. I, I wrote oh, okay, down okay. my follow-up. So, okay, okay, so, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that, you know, for me, it's about consistency. Um, mm -hmm. And what we mentioned earlier, like just even if your identity is going to evolve or we're going to help expand it when you actually meet the right team, like what are you, who are you talking to? What is your point of view? Um, I those are the things that I like to see. And what are, are you taking advantage of the resources around you? Because there's resources mm -hmm. around you. No matter where you are in the world, there's a resource around you. The internet is your street team. Are you known locally? Have you reached out mm -hmm. locally to anybody? Mm -hmm. Have you tried to do, you know, local, um, what are those shows called? Like the, where you can the just open show, mics. Open, and, open mics, open mics, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, show, I just yeah. want to see that you're doing some of the work, you know, um, yeah. because I think that 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 speaks volumes. A lot of our mm -hmm. artists that we were able to discover, you know, some artists were because of industry relationships, but some of them was just because they were they were showing up in our algorithm because they were being consistent. And we, you know, mm -hmm. we, we found things from the feed or just because they were, you know, blogs picked it up. And that comes from consistency yep. that comes from leveraging whatever relationships you have. I hate when people mm -hmm. say that they, they don't have the tools to start. You have some level of a tool, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. 
And and I, I love that you mentioned kind of your local community. I just got back from New Orleans. Um, I was at the uh, NOLA Music Con, this, this conference there. And, and the whole focus of this conference was just talking about, you know, bringing some more industry to New Orleans. And uh, we don't have time now to get into RJ, but um, that, you know, a New Orleans artist. And, and I, mm-hmm. for one, if you ever go to New Orleans... Um, Talk to every Uber driver. They're the most engaging <laughs> Uber drivers that I've ever. I learned so much about local New Orleans and culture no, they and love music. Their town. Yeah, they love their town. It's, it's, yeah, un, yeah. it's unreal. Yeah. It's unreal. And As so, like, should. I mean, he, they, I mean, the Uber driver was mentioning RJ, and he's like, and then Lil Wayne lifts everybody up, and then like, there was a whole <laughs> ecosystem that was just in the community and just in the city. And like, and then on the other side, I'm at this conference, which is all business people, all industry people, local, mostly in the local New Orleans people. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you know, it there is an infrastructure, and, and it's small, and and mm-hmm. at least in New Orleans, it's small. And they're like, we don't have any booking agencies here. We want some booking agents to come, but there's a few management companies, there's a few small labels, but it's it's tapping into whatever there is locally because those local people are connected on a bigger scale to the bigger labels or to you know everyone else in the right. industry and so i i think it is important to to grow and establish yourself locally uh even though we have the internet even though we are in this global industry and we want to go global but starting mm-hmm. somewhere you mentioned like an open mic it, that mm-hmm. might seem so small to people who are like but i want to reach gl- i want to reach everyone <laughs> and i go back right. to your point sherry of but who's your one? Who's your yeah, one fan right. that you're talking yeah. to? And like, find that one person. I, I love that. That's that's great. That's right. mm-hmm. um, Absolutely. So you mentioned the um, the team, and I just want to clarify that um, you said you like Omar. You were mentioning kind of the, the team around you, and do you have the right team? Um, can you can you just clarify what you mean by team? Oh, what just, does that just, mean? Our, just our staff, just our staff, you know, and, and when, when I was talking specifically about um, when you mentioned it was you my, mean like the, a manager. Uh, no, no. no I, artist, oh, 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 the artist the, oh, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. The artist like, team. When you say like yeah. an artist, they, they have a team around them. I know we got off on a tangent. Oh, sorry. I, <laughs> I just wanted to clarify this. This came from before. But you're like the artist has the right team around them. You keep referencing team. And I, yeah. I think for people out there, it's like, what does that mean by a team? Yeah, I mean, um, you know finding the right manager and it means maybe growing to it. maybe you don't you're not able to get the you know the school LeBron or the the Jeff Robinson or sure. the you know the big name manager at the at the at the moment the Jay Browns or whoever at the moment uh, yeah. but you know you as you grow you continually you know get bigger and your team grows as it as it may be you know if you're a local rapper yeah. maybe you have you know the most responsible people in your neighborhood the one that wants to be in the business the one who's going to hustle and run around for you but you know he he does all the follow-ups he's making sure your shows are booked he's making sure you know you're at the studio and all the all the thing that you need to have take care of on on that level cool. is uh is, is there you know and, and that's what that's what i mean maybe he's the one who's reaching out and follow following up to shari and, and and myself and trying to send your music out there you know and he's the one who's maybe getting you a good entertainment lawyer and that's another part of your team yeah. right and and as you grow yeah. you continually get those pieces you get a tour manager at, at one point you know then maybe a bigger manager yeah. comes in you know nec- they don't nec- necessarily have to you know kick the old manager out but you maybe maybe they partner up and they form a company and then they, now you now you're now you're a business you know so i just mean uh, a team in that in, in that sense and like even like you know going back i don't know we, we right. talk about Mater a lot but you know even with Mater, like we we made sure she had a right team around her too because we believed in her so much and she, uh, you know she had a manager at the mm-hmm. time and it, it didn't work out but at, at that point we helped her and we got her to jeff robinson who you know who who had who's been uh you know success with Alicia Keys and her and Kay Michelle mm-hmm. and all those so he's involved in now and he has a great team with her and MBK and Janine and Jason and, and her tour manager Kevon and her her attorney sure. now Damon Grandison so you know she has a great team behind her and that just makes our job much mm-hmm. more easier it's great super helpful um well omar sherry this has been so enlightening and i i really appreciate you guys taking the time um i i know that you have unlocked so many uh, doors for so many people listening and you've just been dropping keys and gems left and right. Um, I, I have one final question uh, before I let you go that I ask everybody who comes on the show. Um, what does it mean to you to make it in the new music business? Hmm, Sherry, do you want to do you want to start off with us on that? <sighs> what does it mean to make it in the new music mm-hmm. business as an executive or an artist? You, however you want. However to I want it. Okay. So it's all. Okay. It's up to you. Um, it could be personal. It could be for your artist. It's. It's however. Uh, however you want to want to take it. Well, considering it's subjective, right? Um, I would yeah. say, you know, what what it what it means for me 
where I am in yeah. my career today to make it yeah. is to build career artists. I think, mm -hmm. um, and when I say career artists, that means that artists that are around beyond what we do for them as a company, right? Taking mm -hmm. us aside, are you still able to succeed? That's what I'm in it for every day. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, we talked about just like adding to the culture and creating more legacy, creating more sustainable catalog, stuff that's going to be around um, for years and years to come. That's what I'm in it for. I'm in it for the long-term legacy piece of this. Yeah. I awesome. mean, I, I'll take Omar. it to, I'll take it to maybe the artist side of it because, you know, I, I okay. think that's a great question because it's, um, you know, we have a lot of small wins, right? We have a lot of artists who, who you know, make it in their own right. And maybe that's what they want to do. Maybe they want to go viral and that's making it for them. Maybe they want to, you know, have a big hit single and that's what's making it for them. Maybe they want to play, you know, 500 seaters or, get, or, you know, reach their bar. And that's what that's what it is for them, right? I, you know, like Sherry said, I think for us making it is having artists not necessarily that, that are successful. Yes, 100%, but also cultural. Also are, are making a staple, making a name and, and creating a dent in mm -hmm. the business as well. You know, and also to, to be global, you know, I think we lose sight of it where we, we we see wins and we see certain things and we think everything is a hit because there's so much music out. And just because you have a viral moment doesn't necessarily mean a hit. Like to make it to me still means like we I want that billboard number one spot, you know, to me, that's still making it <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day. Right on. Yeah. Cool. So Omar, we, Sherry, I, I, saying, thank saying, you saying guys not so to much. Say, say not to say we don't have we don't have small, small goals. We have big goals. If you can hear the, the answers from Sherry and myself. I love it. I love it. And uh, I, I, I love what you guys are doing uh, with Rock Nation and developing artists and really thinking long term. And it's very encouraging. Um, and it's uh, yeah, keep it up. It's great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. having us, Ari. Absolutely. Oh. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Today's episode was edited by Mikey Evans with music by Brassroots District and produced by all the great people at Ari's Take.